All right, I'm going to throw a bowl here, and I've been throwing already. Um, I've got my bat on here, and I could take the whole bat off and, and uh, put a new clean bat on top, or I can throw right on the clay that I've already got there. I'm going to get the water off of the top here, but then I can just draw myself a couple lines, and the next piece of clay that I put down will stay put on top of there. Won't work, it, this is a linoleum bat, won't work on the wheel head or the bat if it's wet, but it works perfectly fine if it's got some clay on there already. So I'm gonna walk slowly through the process of centering here um, to show you basically as much as I can. So I'm gonna start by cent the centering process. I've put this chunk of clay down and I've given it some weight down. Some people like to throw it I've got bad aim, so I don't throw it, but I just give it a little push. And then once I get my hands nice and wet, I can take and push down on the clay uh, from above. That pushing down keeps the water from getting up underneath there, keeps this from hydroplaning and sliding off. It's important to start with clay that's fairly round, so either I've got sort of a, a dome shape here, uh, a, a sphere or a cylinder is also good. You don't want to start out with a square kind of shape because as your hand hits that it's going to bounce around and it's going to be harder to center. So I've got this push down here. I'm also sitting real close to my my, uh, my stool is right up against the wheel head. My body, I, I use a towel to keep clean, but my body is right up against, or my seat is right up against the wheel head and then I've got bad posture. I'm slumping over like mom, mom told you to sit up straight. You need to slunch up, slump over um, to keep yourself, to keep your weight above this clay. Now, you don't need to just be strong to do this, but what you do need to figure out is how to get your lever, how to get yourself leverage so that you're over the clay um, so that you're not moving. If you lean back and sit back like this and try to throw the clay, you can wiggle your arms, your wrists, your shoulders, your whole body side to side, and that clay can really kind of throw you around, uh, particularly if you're not you know, comfortable with, with throwing it. If you lean yourself over, it's a little harder to move quite as much of your, part, of your arms and, and, and body. If you get your elbow against your leg, suddenly that elbow can't move very far. If you get your other elbow against your leg or your body, whatever's comfortable, and maybe clasp those two hands together, now suddenly there's a very smaller amount of movement that you can do without breaking those points of contact. And so that is something you need to get some practice with, particularly if you do not have the upper arm strength to just push this piece of clay into, into position. So I am gonna constantly be in that position throughout the entire throwing process. I may, you know, vary that a little bit. My hands may move into different positions, but basically they're gonna stick right around here. And the idea with throwing is anything I do on the side of the pot, on the side of the clay, whether it's a pot or not, anything I do over here will happen all the way around as long as the wheel's spinning. So if I draw a line here, it's happening all the way around. It is even, the line I've drawn. The first part of centering the clay, getting the clay ready to throw, is getting all of this clay even, so anything you do on either side happens completely evenly. So I'm going to get my hands wet. I want the clay to stick to the bat or to the wheel head and not to my hands, and the water on there allows that to happen. First thing I'm going to do is just take the palms of my hands and push down and into the clay, get it nice and secured onto the wheel. Now I'm going to start to cone up, and so that is, I'm still using the same part of my hand, but now I'm pushing those hands in. As I push the clay in, it can't go down, it can't go out, it must go up. And so that's what happens when you're coning the clay. It comes up. Now, I can't reach this part of the clay, so I'm going to grab, I'm going to add some water because I'm starting to stick. I'm going to gradually bring my fingers up to the top, and not farther than that. The tops of my thumbs come to, to come together to make a cone kind of shape at the top. What I don't do is whip my hands off of there. And if I do whip my hands off there, I sometimes end up, I'm exaggerating here, but I sometimes end up adding some wobble because of the way I move quickly. I'm less controlled up here than I am here. And you can see my body position changes a little bit as I move up and down. All right, so I'm gonna come back to the top and recenter that. Now, at this point, this part of clay is fairly centered. This part of the clay still has some twist, some unevenness to it. Um, the centering process will help me with that, but there's a little bit of clay down here at the bottom that I can't really get to. The clay is gritty, 
If I really push my hand against there, it can hurt my hand. And so I'm going to use a rib to get, get rid of that extra clay. You can use a fingertip, um, but the rib doesn't hurt your finger. So I'm going to use this rib. Now the rib, if I put it straight down, notice I'm working over here on, if I'm working uh, on the right side of the wheel head. So if I look at this like a clock, this is 3 o'clock on the wheel head, that's about where I'm working. Over here, everything is reversed. The clay is coming towards me. Over here, the clay is moving away from me because my wheel is spinning in that direction. So my rib, this way, will push the clay. This way will kind of bounce, and this way will cut away the clay. I'm trying to remove clay, so I'm going to tip that rib back towards me and cut away that clay. And see, I've removed some of that clay off of there. Now I've got uh, less clay stuck to the wheel head. I can get my hand closer to there as I do that cone up. And if I add more clay here, I might cone it up a little bit more. But I don't want to get this weak. This is wider at the bottom than it is at the top, and that's how it should be. Now I'm going to start to bring this clay down, so I'm going to change hand positions. I've still got some water on both of my palms. I'm going to push down with this top palm. My right hand is going to come with it, though, because you see what happens to my arm. As I'm pushing down here, this isn't very stable. I can move all the way around. And if I were to do that, watch what happens. My hand starts to move. The clay starts to move. So these two hands need to come together to keep this hand steady and because that clay will take the path of least resistance. It can't go up, it can't, it, uh, you know, it's got clay in the way, so it just starts to go to the side. It needs to run into something to force it to fill in this space below. So instead of getting it to mushroom out at the top, I'm going to push down and then push in a little bit or the clay will hit that hand and be forced down. So I'm leaning my body weight over, and you see my hands are working together. You cannot really tell when one is doing the work or the other. And now this is coming down much more evenly. Notice it's gotten wider, but wider in a, in a more even place. This is still a little wobbly here, and so I'm going to continue to do that, pushing down and pushing in. And you, if it's too hard to do both at the same time, you can alternate. You can push down, and then you can push in. Keep your hands in the same position though. I moved mine so you can see. The idea here is that you can alternate between these two moves, pushing down and pushing in, um, but your hands stay together because when you push in, the path of least resistance is for the clay to come straight up. You want it to fill in this whole space. If you simply push on the outside, you can eventually end up with kind of a volcano shape like this where it comes up higher on the outside than the inside. One other thing I'm doing when I'm doing this is I told you I was going to push straight down and straight in, but I actually dropped my hand over the side here because I want this to be rounded. If I, if I treat both, both hands like a flat slab, then I end up with a space here on the corner that doesn't get uh, compressed, doesn't get uh, worked into the rest of the clay. So one hand, the back of my hand, the front of my fingers, the back of my thumb, something drops over that. Uh, corner of the clay as I'm compressing. So coning up is useful. You do not have to cone up though. You simply could alternate between pressing the clay down like that and then pressing the clay up. And you can do, you can completely skip the coning process if you choose to. Now um, when you start to center, it takes a lot of practice. You get basically close to centered and then you try it. But you're not going to be an expert at centering for, you know, until you've done this many, many, many times. So usually a couple weeks into the class, you're really comfortable with centering. Maybe longer, maybe it'll take a year. Um, but you get to the point where you can function with it. One other thing is I keep messing with this while I'm talking, and so I've actually taken mine just a bit off of center. It was more centered a little while ago, but then I kept messing with it. So I recommend when you get centered, you're done, you keep moving on. You practice again on the next piece of clay. So I am going to now drill my hole. So I've centered my clay, it's a little wider than it is tall, now I'm going to drill my hole. My hands stay in more or less the same position. Notice my elbow is against my body, my fingers are over the clay uh, like this, and my two hands are together. If I, hold, if I try to drill my hole with this hand loose like that, it moves around again. Even if it's stuck against my body, it can move quite a bit in the wrist area. If this hand is sitting here as a brace, this, this finger can't move as much. So I'm going to just set these fingertips down. It doesn't matter which fingertips. In fact, some people like to use their thumbs, and that's fine. 
as long as you're stable and you can drill that hole in the middle. Once I've got that hole in the middle, and it does it's not a loop, it's not a wobble, um, then I can add some water into that little cup and I can start to drill straight down. Now this process is fairly quick. Centering took a lot more time than drilling the hole. Um, but I can, uh, when I'm starting out, I can stop right here at this point and I can measure the thickness of my floor. So I'm stopping the wheel. This is about the only thing I'm doing with the wheel stopped in the process. So I'm going to take this needle tool and I'm going to press it all the way down until the tip of it touches the wheel head or the bat. Then I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to press my finger into the floor, you know, touching the floor, and then I'm going to hold on to the needle tool as I pull my finger out. Now the distance from my fingertip to the needle tool tip, that is about um, a half an inch, quarter of an inch or so, and that allows me room to trim my foot later on after I've, I've thrown it. So I've drilled my hole, now I'm going to open out my wall here, and as I open out my wall, I'm going to bring my fingertips up just a little bit. Notice that I'm not leaning my whole hand over. I can do that, and what it will create is a, a triangular bottom, which is not what we want, and a bunch of clay I can't really get to. So it's important that I use my fingertips to create a gentle curve and that the length of my finger stays put. There's actually two ways to do this. You can also tuck, if this is really uncomfortable, if your fingers bend backwards, you can actually tuck your fingers and not worry about this clay up at the top and bring your fingertips up and out. Uh, but the important thing being that the fingertips create that curve at the bottom. So I'm going to add some water, get my hands braced, get my body braced, and these fingertips are coming up and out. So now I've created a nice curve on my floor. Can't see it because I got water in there, but once I get the water out of there, I can see that nice curve. As soon as my right hand wants to start to move, I'm done with that process and I'm going to move on to the next step of the process. So I'm going to grab my sponge and I'm going to use a fingertip on the outside, fingertip on the inside. I'm going to lean over. My hands are braced together. I know it looks funny. It looks like I'm doing butterflies or something like that. Uh, but if my fingertips are separate, I tend to do this. I tend to, to follow this clay around. I need them to stay together so the pressure is across uh, from, is each finger across from each other. I'm using a little bit more pressure on the inside wall and that helps this wall come out. I let up my pressure at the top and then I'm going to compress my rim just a bit up there. Now I'm going to really grab this clay at the bottom because I can bring that up into the side of my wall. And I'm watching this outside wall. My body is over to the side here and that helps me lean and helps me increase the pressure that's on the inside. I'm trying to create a nice curve. I don't really care as much what it looks like out here. I'm worried about what it looks like on the inside and I'm worried about making this wall even up through, well, the wall of it. Um, I'm gonna see if I can do one more pull. I don't have a lot of room to work with here, but I've got enough. Compress my rim. And now I'm gonna get the water out of the inside so it doesn't crack and use a rib to compress that inside. You can use a metal rib, or you can use a, uh, one of these little rubber ribs, the Cheryl ribs, the mud ribs. Um, and the important thing being, just like when you're cutting away the clay, you're cutting it away, now we want to press the clay. So I'm going to lean this back towards me. I'm working at 3 o'clock on the wheel head, and I'm compressing that clay. All right. And then I might want to use a chamois on my rim. Chamois gets your rim a little nicer, a little cleaner looking than if you do it the other way, and my chamois is too dry, so I'm going to let it uh, get wet for a moment while I do an undercut here. So I'm going to use my wooden knife to do my undercut. Undercut saves you time later on, so I highly recommend you do it. You cut through that clay there, and then you can dribble some, wa oops, dri dribble some water down your knife, if you don't miss. And then that gets, uh, gets it so that you can undercut, uh, you can get this, use your needle tool to cut that clay away and get that hydroplaning off of there. All right, my chamois should be ready now. I'm going to fold, I'm going to hold, get this chamois wet and I'm going to fold it over the rim, but I'm not pushing down on the rim. I'm actually pushing on the sides of the rim 
while this chamois uh, just glides over that rim. And I can play around with uh, you know, changing the shape by using pressure a little differently, get a little flare going here if I want to. Let up my pressure slowly as I take my, uh, in this case, chamois or my hands or my fingers or my sponge, whatever it is, off of, off of the wheel to be done. And then even though I'm throwing on a bat, it's important that I undercut this. If I want to use the same bat again, I can just slide this off and put it onto a board that's got a paper on it. And then I'm ready to throw again on the same bat like I did earlier. Just make sure that it's dry and it's ready for the next piece of clay.